of my fellow gardeners. I was walking through my garden yesterday, still seeing all the blooms from the annuals that I planted, gosh, back in late April, early May, that are still blooming, and I thought that I would do a video on my top five annuals. Annuals that I love and annuals that really performed really well uh, in the Oklahoma heat and humidity, um, and that bloomed from spring and are still currently blooming now uh, here in the fall. So I, uh, although I do have a for sure number one, that's oh my, the number one is, just gosh dang it. So these are my top five. They're not in any particular order except for number one. Uh, number one just performed so well over these past several months um, and the others are just the other four that I think just you know did tremendously well uh, the spring summer and now into the fall so let's get started So I mention in every single video, more than once, zinnias. Uh, zinnias come in so many different colors, so many different sizes. Um, I plant them throughout my whole beds. Um, I plant them in pots. And I have, a, as you saw, the you know, zinnias here on the border, um, you know, that get to be maybe about a foot, foot and a half. Then you have some zinnias here in the middle. Um, you know that are a little over two feet and then zinnias in the back that are reaching probably f over four feet but zinnias are such good performers they're amazing cut flowers um, they do again do well in pots they're drought tolerant um, they're very easy to start from seed which the majority of these I did start from seed um, and they just do so well they will bloom um, until frost hits it gets freezing and then they'll all die back but that is by far one of my top four annuals out here in good old Oklahoma so another one that just performs fabulously is this gumfrina uh, from proven winners it's truffula pink uh, this has just done tremendously um, this season. I planted it again in spring. Here it is getting ready to be in the middle of October and it still looks so very well spilling over this wall right here. It loves full sun. It's drought tolerant. Um, it does extremely well in pots. Uh, it just is such a beautiful flower and I've been thinking about having to tear out some of these um, annuals here in the near future and I just look at how pretty this is and it's going to be difficult to do it. The pollinators are still really enjoying it. Uh, but this right here is one of Proven Winner's best sellers. Um, if you've never tried it, I absolutely recommend it. Another one that's in the top four is the Spider Flower also from Proven Winners, it's a Cleome. Um, this is again just a fantastic flower. It's unique in the sense that it gets to be about three feet tall and it's not near as wide so it's only about one to one and a half feet wide so it gives you some real good vertical growth. And I planted these again in early, uh, late spring, early summer still have blooms on them. Uh, pollinators love them. They like the full sun. Uh, just a really great, great flower to plant. Um, I recently purchased the white. So they've got the pink and they have the white. I, I had this pink in my garden last year, did really well. Um, and so I did purchase the white, um, which we'll pan over here in a minute. Um, um, so you guys can see it so but again if this isn't a flower that you have purchased and you've got a lot of sun 
Um, I absolutely recommend it. <laughs> Another one of my top four is this Gold Dust Macedonia or Macedonia, or however you say this flower. This is another that I planted in uh, late April, and it's just such a beautiful flower. I come out here in the afternoons, and there are bumblebees on this thing like crazy. It's just, uh, it's really neat. It's a good ground cover. You can put it in pots. Um, I have it in another pot that you'll see here in just a second when he goes over there. But um, this just does really well. Again, it's another full sun. This is also by Proven Winners. Um, but it's a really fun flower. And again, pollinators love it. The, the huge bumblebees on this are just so cool to see. All right, so my number one performer this year, I had, this is my first time ever planting this flower is the scaviola, the fan flower. Um, this is the whirlwind series from Proven Winners. Uh, I just planted this one um, maybe a month ago or so when I um, transitioned this pot from summer to fall. But I had, and I'm going to put a picture up there of what, I had a purple one that I had in another pot um, since late spring and we just we just got back from a trip a vacation for a week and when i came back everything in that pot was dead because i did not water it um, and i was so sad but the scaviola in that did die um, but again i'm going to have my husband put just this picture of it to to show you what it looked like it just was beautiful all summer long um, so easy uh, I didn't fertilize it, it's just a regular watering. And you know, one thing that I want to mention about all the flowers that I told you from the gold dust to the scaviola to the cleome, um, what other ones? The zinnias, uh, the, the, and the gumfrina. They're very, very easy. Um, I, these are ones that I don't fertilize at all. Um, not to say that it probably wouldn't benefit a little bit if you did fertilize them, especially the um, the fan flower, not the fan flower, this um, the cleome, the spider flower. I take that back. I did fertilize that one, and you could tell a big difference in that one. But the majority of them, super, super easy um, to care for. Not too much effort other than just regular watering. Um, I did want to add some runner-up. Um, you always have to add petunias. Uh, they're just such a wide variety. They're beautiful. Um, I only have a few left um, and that I actually started over there with the black petunias. So these were one of the, the first flowers that I planted um, this spring were the black petunias. Um, petunias absolutely need regular fertilizing. Um, I fertilized every seven to 10 uh, days. Uh, but they're just such a, such a beautiful flower. They give your beds and your pots just so much character, so many blooms. Um, so that's definitely a runner, runner up. So the black petunias over here are original. Also the super tunia um, lattes from Proven Winners. I actually transferred these over from another pot just to create this fall pot here, but uh, I've had these for months now, uh, since late spring as well. Um, they did, I did have to cut them back a little bit because I kind of stopped taking care of them later in the summer, but I've planted them in here and they're doing really well. This is the Supertunia Vista Jazzberry. Uh, first time that I ever planted this, planted these late so I didn't plant these until probably closer to the end of September I just kind of wanted to see how they would do and man they're so pretty I just love them they're they're doing super super well now on what October 10th um, so petunias you just can't go wrong with petunias another runner-up is right around this corner this is coleus it's the wicked witch coleus it, 
It is at least three feet, if not taller. It's just beautiful. Um, loves the full sun as well. So easy to maintain. Um, it's really, really fun to come out and cut it and put it in um, flowers that you, you pick and put in a vase for inside. I think I might have said on another video is you can actually take some of this coleus. Um, sorry, it's like must be five o'clock here because there's so many cars running by. Um, you can take uh, a good portion of this and plant it in water and get uh, roots going and actually carry it over and you know through the winter and replant it in uh, the spring which is what my husband and I did do um, not in particular not this this coleus but the coleus over in the corner there but Wicked Witch coleus just beautiful I love the greenery love the purple um, just a really neat neat plant. I could probably go on forever about all these beautiful flowers, but I will end on this. It's a Dahlia hybrid from Proven Winners. It's called Mystic Illusion. Um, this is the coolest, coolest plant. Um, I planted it in the wrong area, um, so I will definitely be purchasing it um, next year and putting it kind of towards the middle of my cottage garden. But I just think that the purple, almost black leaf, um, in contrast to the yellow, beautiful flowers, this is just such a neat flower. And it's still blooming. Now this did take a little bit. This didn't really start blooming until more of the middle of the summer. Um, but here it is. Again, it's, it's fall and um, it's still blooming. It's just such a, such a neat plant. So. Um, totally recommend this flower as well and with that and with that I will wrap this up I just it's always fun going through the garden and it's always fun when my husband carries the camera around and follows me and lets me just talk about flowers because that's what I love to do so if you haven't tried one of those five flowers well really I think there was eight flowers <laughs> um, man I, I totally suggest that you do it's um, always fun trying something new and if you have a favorite annual that I did not mention, I would love to have you comment so that I can try out something, you know, different with next spring, summer season. So uh, thank you so much for tagging along and I hope you have a great rest of the week.